How's the first week going? Uh, well, yeah, I uh, really feel good about the progress of our team. Uh, knock on wood, health is um, solid. Uh, nothing, nothing too serious right now. Just trying to, especially with an older team, just trying to get to the starting line, making sure everybody feels really good. So uh, we have one more week, weekend of inter-squad games, uh, maybe play a little bit of a game on Tuesday and, and just make sure we're ready for the season, hoping we have this sunshine uh, next Friday. So I was going to ask, other than Prager, are y'all pretty healthy heading in so far? Yeah, I think so. I, I don't, uh, you know, we lost Prager and uh, Luke Jackson, uh, Lucas Kelly. Uh, those three guys uh, won't play this year, but um, but everybody else as of right now, you know, everybody's got a little bit of something most of the time, but trying, trying to make sure they go into the season feeling great. You talked before about having, you know, when everybody's playing when you're in your squad and then you have to compress that and people still want to win jobs and compete. How, how do you get the, the pulse of what your guys are going through a week before you, you're going to be, you know, go from 18 to maybe 13 players. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a challenge on every team. And we had a conversation about that, about, you know, you have to be mentally and physically committed to the process of becoming a good player without being emotionally connected to the results. Right. And so, you know, there's a, there's some really good young players on this team that, um, I'm going to be looking for ways to get them at bats. Uh, but this is a club that, you know, with the guys like Werner and Boast and Moss and Minnick and uh, JT and, and um, uh, you know, Targotch. I mean, those, those guys, I'm not saying they're going to get the bulk of the at-bats. They have to win a job and keep the job, too. But once they do, you know, we don't play every day. Uh, there's only four games in a week, and you, you got to make sure your regulars get at-bats. But at the same time, Caden Kent, Justin Vassos, Cason Wells, um, uh, you know, Tab Tracy potentially, obviously a lot of pitchers. I'm going to be, you know, we f we love the future of those guys as players in our program. So um, they're going to have to, uh, or I'm not saying them in particular because they haven't made any decisions yet, but it's it's always a challenge to all teams. Uh, how, how do you handle, you know, everybody freaks out about the first weekend. And it very rarely is the weekend at the end of the, uh, the lineup at the end of the season the same as it is in the beginning. So you just got to keep playing. It's a long year. Yeah, really excited. Um, excited for the basketball team. Um, I'm a huge college basketball fan, so I think that's been great. I think that'll be a spillover for us to keep people engaged and excited uh, for Aggie athletics. And uh, I'm excited for um, softball season as well um, for our new coach. And uh, but yeah, uh, you know, this is a much different feeling than this time last year. This time last year, where you know I had my finger in everything, trying to figure out you know what the game promote game operation was going to be like and music and stuff like that and so uh, this year way more comfortable and and uh, focused on just the baseball stuff. Coach, uh, one of those young guys that you care a lot about is uh, Max Coffer. Uh, so what have you seen from him in his first week and how has he handled the transition from high school to college? Yeah, uh, I can't remember a player. I've never had a guy graduate early, um, but even if he were just a true freshman and had been here in the fall, you wouldn't be able to know. You would think he's a sophomore or junior. Just with his body language, the questions he asks, he's come in. Usually a guy will come in like that in their freshman year and be one of two things. They'll be incredibly overconfident or fake confident and try to justify their existence with their mouth and how they talk, and therefore everybody just tells you to shut up, right? Or they'll be the guy that's scared to death and doesn't say anything. And he's been right smack dab, right where he's supposed to be humble yet confident and um, he's performed well uh, does that mean he's the starting catcher I mean he's gonna play uh, but I don't I don't I haven't really made you know any decision on any of that stuff and we have you know four weeks before conference play to to try and figure out the best version of our team although we're, we, we want to win every game so but he's been I mean you couldn't draw it up any better to this point uh, for a guy who still should be in high school Give an idea what the, the back end of the bullpen is going to look like. And, you know, I think uh, you know, obviously Will Johnson will play a role in that. I think Dillard will play a role in that. I think Lambert will play a role in that. Uh, I don't, you know, we we have a lot of left-handed options. Uh, we have some good right-handed options. Probably more. I would say the left-handers have have outperformed the right-handers, um, with the exception of Lambert uh, at to this point. Uh, so, you know, we did okay with the lefties we had at the end of the game last year with Palish and Menifee and, and Will towards the end of the season. So, um, so yeah, I think we have uh, multiple options. I don't, 
I don't see us, <coughs> excuse me, I don't see us having a true everyday closer um, yet that could develop, um, but I see us having options, that, good options down there that can finish games. Speaking of pitching wise, you have a, you've got some really talented freshmen that have to go through the growing pains of not only having to play with runners on because maybe they didn't have very many in high school, but also their workload. There's a lot <coughs> of guys that you know, would go out and throw five innings on a week and, and get a win and they'd be done with it. How do you adjust them and, and, and manage their workload coming into a season? Yeah, it's a delicate balance, uh, no doubt about it. Um, we have some guys that are just like that, Lampkin, Sadeo, uh, in particular, are two really talented left-handed pitchers as freshmen that are going to pitch a, a lot for us. Ty Sexton um, is a redshirt freshman that's going to pitch a lot for us. He's going to be a good right-handed option. Um, they're just not, you know, when you look at Nathan Detmer, and he's 225, 230 pounds. Uh, you know, he's three years older. Um, those, that's what you eventually hope those guys look like. And, and you need that uh, in college baseball to handle the, the length of the season. So uh, we just got to pick and choose our times. And, and probably when they have a good outing, um, take them out maybe a little bit ahead of time versus riding them a little bit extra. And I think if we can stay healthy, then we'll have enough options down there. We don't have to ride one of those guys for so long, like, like Prager last year, you know, we had to, he had to pitch and he had to pitch a lot. And, and I think on, there were, had we been a deeper team, there would have been other opportunities to give him a break or pitch him a little bit less. Jim, you kind of mentioned this a second ago about not having a closer for the start of the year. Just based off your time in college baseball, what are some traits that you look for in a closer? And is there certain things that you want matchup wise, or is it just based off of consistency, control? Yeah, I mean, number one, you want a strike thrower. You know, a guy that can is going to command command the baseball because you can't give up free bases. Uh, a guy that can field his position because a lot of times you may be bringing him in in the eighth inning to get you out of a jam. Um, uh, you'd like to have that, you know, swing and miss type stuff. If you bring him in two outs and a runner, at, or I'm sorry, one out, a runner at third base in the eighth inning of a close game, and you, we need a strikeout. I mean, we need a strikeout, and and you'd like to have that guy that can do that. Um, and then he's got to be resilient. He's got to be able to do it back-to-back -back days or maybe two out of three days in a weekend. So, um, you know, I've had some great ones, uh, one from College Station, Riley Farrell at, at TCU, uh, D Durbin Feltman was a great one for us up there too. Um, but we've also had seasons like last year where, you know, Palish was that guy a lot of times. Brad Rudis did it, you know, at, you know, with 87, 88 miles an hour. So um, got to be a strike thrower, got to be confident, can't be scared. And so I think we have multiple options down there. And, who knows, maybe someone will emerge as that everyday guy, but I also think we have enough options that that we don't have to have that. When you have an opportunity such as a closer, you know, you have to play with a short mind, especially if you do end up blowing a save. Is that a trait that you feel like that a lot of these young players are going to have to just learn to experience? I mean, I think every every young player has to learn how to deal with failure, especially, um, especially when they make the jump from high school or junior college baseball or even another a four-year transfer that hasn't played in this league um, I'm still learning how to deal with that too uh, over 33 years I'm the biggest powder after a game ever but um, but no these guys uh, you know they'll they'll learn as they go along that's part of the evolution of a young player and uh, that's why when you have an older player like a Dillard or Will Johnston or somebody uh, somebody who's been through that they're able to flush it and move on to the next day Major league example, like Albert Bull is never going to lead you in stolen bases, but say, you know, we think you can hit better against lefties or this or that. How do you kind of identify those areas where they can? Well, most of the time, players know. You know, they may not they, they may not admit it, but the very best players that I've ever coached, the number one trait they all have is they're self-aware. So, um, use Brett Minnick for example. You know, we he could have signed, could have signed professionally. Austin Bose could have signed professionally, but it's not about going out and getting the opportunity to play pro ball. It's about being a major league player. And so are you, have you become the very best amateur baseball player you can possibly become? In my opinion, you don't go to pro ball until you've become the very best amateur baseball player. So Austin Boast needed to really, uh, you know, ha have a true position, second base, right? So that was his, one of his many motivations to come back. Brett Minnick wasn't healthy. Um, he didn't handle left-handed pitching as well last year as he is now. And so, you know, if you can't hit the lefties in college, great. What are you going to do with the ones in professional baseball, right? So, so I think you just have real conversations with them. And mo most of those guys, they already know, 
right? And because they want to be big leaguers too, and and they're committed to excellence, and they they see, hey, you know, this is who I am, this is what I'm capable of doing, and and um, and then of course we have those conversations with them to because we want them to be successful and and get out in pro ball and do well. So I think you just be honest with players and and not just tell them. You don't just tell them what their defi deficiencies are. You say, hey, this is an area you can get better, and here's how we're going to help you do it. And if you can become that guy, then holy cow, that helps our team, helps our program, and then helps you, you know, in your professional career. I know you've lost a, a few guys that have been consistent pitchers for you last year, but returning Coach Yeski, has it felt like with the other guys that it's been hit the ground running with the, the program, the system, the way y'all want to do things? Yeah, yeah, I think we have, you know, Detmer and jo Will Johnson specifically have done a really good job of leading the pitching staff. Chris Cortez has that in him. Um, same thing with the position players and, uh, you know, you, you want to, it's a coachy saying, but you want coach fed, player led, right? So, and you want the, the players to, to, to lead the team. So, so yeah, I think everybody is way more aware of how we do things, how we want to want to do it. Uh, and what the standards are, and, and they're holding each other accountable to the standard. Have you had balance between days when the hitters were good and the pitchers were good, and how did the other group react the next day? Have you seen that ebb and flow that you want to have with a good team? Yeah, I mean, I, both of them I lose sleep over, uh, you know, because the days you swing the bat well, you're like, are we ever going to pitch well? Ideally, what you want is you want the pitchers to make really good pitches. When they don't make a good pitch, you want it to get hit and hit hard. Uh, and then I want to make all the plays on defense. And so uh, early on, our hitting was beating the heck out of our pitching, um, but the pitchers have caught up. Uh, and uh, so we've had some really good inter-squad games lately. Pitchers are challenging guys more in the strike zone um, and understanding that an out's an out. You know, If it's a line drive at a shortstop on the second pitch of an at-bat, that's a whole heck of a lot better than a free base. So um, so yeah, I would say that there, there's been a good you know mix and match. and. And I think we just need to get through this weekend, and guys are ready to play. Kind of playing off of Ben's question about guys who had pro opportunities but came back. Trevor Warner, hard to believe it's his fourth year, and we still haven't seen a full season out of him. How do you think he handled the adversity of last year, and what kind of player can he be to he stay healthy for the full 55 games? I mean, I nicknamed him my first week here, Secpoy, you know, SEC Player of the Year, because I want him thinking that mindset. I think he's capable of being that kind of player. Uh, he's he's the most tooled out player that I've ever coached uh, in 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 college baseball. I mean, I've coached, coached a few USA teams that have those kind of players, but you know he can run, he can hit, he can hit with power. He's got a great arm. Um, he can play good defense at multiple positions. Um, he's big and strong, so that's what they look like in the major leagues. And so um, he handled last year great. Uh, you know, he fought hard to get back after oblique and then he fought hard to get back after a, um, a handmate surgery and he was never really himself except for the first weekend of the season after the Fordham weekend he was never the same guy even at the end of the year and so um, he certainly has earned he deserves to have success and deserves to have a healthy season uh, I'm just trying to keep him in bubble wrap until we until we get to next Friday you have a pretty good uh, dress rehearsal for Saturday with the former players BP and and the scrimmage tell us about that yeah, I mean, uh, we don't, I don't really, it, it, the, uh, the batting practice for the former players would be awesome because it's, it's great for them. It's great to see the families. It's great for our players to see the history of the program and a lot of the great players that have come through. Um, and then the inner squad itself, you know, that'll just be another, it'll just be a, a, another inner squad for us. It's not like we're going to be in full uniform or anything like that. But all of our inner squads are open to the public. But it'd be nice if we can have a pretty day um, where we can get, uh, some fans in the ballpark and give them a little preview of, of our team. I know you mentioned having uh, kind of a fandom for a lot of different sports. Uh, before you came here, it had been a long time since you had a, a softball team around. Is there a, a nice camaraderie in having that kind of parallel sports around too? Yeah, I've actually never attended a college softball game. <laughs> uh, we, had, we had softball when I was at UNLV 23, 24 years ago. I never made it to a game, I didn't have it at TCU. Uh, I was swamped last year. I feel I'm embarrassed to say I haven't been. So, uh, but I've met Coach Ford several times, and and uh, I'm super excited to go to go see see a game. I really don't. Other than watching on TV, it's obviously faster paced game, uh, a lot of emotion. Um, you get to use one pitcher. That's really cool, uh, or at least one good pitcher. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to go watch their team play. Jim, I'm not sure if you brought this up before, but Austin replaces Perez number 12. What would you 
Uh, that was more of uh, not, not a team vote. A team is a vote of our coaching staff and support staff, uh, people that deal with everybody on a daily basis. Uh, that 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 was a tough one uh, because you could have picked a lot of players. Um, I kind of a rule for myself moving forward. I'm gonna always have to stick to it, but I'd like for it to be somebody in their last year um, versus somebody that still has eligibility left. Um, but Austin embodies everything that Aggie baseball is about. Being an Aggie, he's got a family full of that. Um, He's super passionate about this place and the traditions and the history of Texas A&M, and and he's one of the most competitive guys that I've ever coached. So, uh, if you were to if you were to draw up a perfect number twelve, um, Troy was I thought was that last year, and Austin certainly is the same. All right, thanks for coming out, guys. See you.